We have a relationship called Coulomb's Law that helps us to understand the force between two charged objects, which brings up the question, um, what is a charged object, or how does it get charged in the first place? We'll look at a few different methods, but the important thing to keep in mind here is that we aren't creating new charges, we're just redistributing existing charges. Everything is made up of protons and neutrons and electrons. The protons are positively charged, and the electrons are negatively charged. And usually we have about even amounts of, uh, of each of those. So all we need to do is give something extra electrons or take away electrons from something to make it charged. So we can do that in a few different ways. One way would be charging by friction. This is uh, using an effect called the triboelectric effect. This idea that different materials have different abilities to, uh, to hold on to their electrons. So if we take two different materials and rub them together, sometimes we'll find that electrons will actually jump from one object to another, as shown in this animation. And we can see the object on the right has lost some electrons, the one on the left has gained some electrons, so the one on the left is now negatively charged, the one on the right is now positively charged, but we didn't uh, change the total number of charges, we just moved them from right to left there. Um, now this is an important idea called the conservation of charge. The total number of charges doesn't change, we just move locations on these things. If we have some object that's already charged, uh, we can charge up a second object by using that first one. Now charges will try to uh, repel from like charges, and so if we give them extra space to repel into, um, they can flow from one object to another. So here on the left we have this object with a bunch of extra negative charges, and the one on the right has even numbers of positive and negative charges. And uh, when they touch, what we'll see here is that, uh, well, suddenly there's extra room for those electrons to spread out into. And so we're going to get this redistribution of electrons so that they're um, spread as far away from the other electrons as they can be. Um, we find that they, they spread uniformly throughout the surface of the material. Not, not the interior, but throughout the surface of the material. Now here where we have evenly sized uh, objects, that's going to mean that we get equally sized charges. If we had one object that was bigger than the other, the distribution would be the same across the two charges, but the total amount of char or uh, across the two objects, but the total amount of charge would not be the same across those two. The bigger object would have more space for those extra charges to occupy, so it would get more of those charges. That's going to be proportional to the, uh, uh, the area of those objects. So if one had a surface area that was four times the other, it's going to get a charge, an excess charge of four times the other one. Now this type of charging is what we refer to as a, uh, a static shock sometimes. So if you scuff your feet on the carpet for a while on a dry winter day, and then you touch a light switch, you get that shock. What you're doing when you're scuffing your feet on the carpet is actually um, charging by friction, in the, as in the previous problem. So uh, you know, your feet and the carpet have different abilities to hold on to electrons. And I'm not sure which way it works here, but either you're gaining electrons from the carpet or the carpet's gaining electrons from you. Uh, and then when you touch that light switch, you're touching a uh, uh, contact to a piece of a really long piece of metal that you know, goes to ground, basically, which just means it goes into the earth, which means there's lots and lots of space and lots and lots of extra electrons. So if you have um, a net positive charge, you'll have electrons flow through the light switch into your hand. If you have a net negative charge, you'll have electrons flow from your hand into this extra space provided by, uh, by the earth there. Either way, not a whole lot of fun. The last method of charging is called charging by induction, which actually doesn't require contact at all. So the idea here is that if we bring some charged object close to some uncharged one, 
Um, so here we brought a positively charged object close to this neutral object. We know that the neutral object isn't really uncharged, it just has even numbers of charges. Well, the charges that are opposite of uh, the charged object, so in this case the negative charges, are going to be attracted to that, that new object, and the positive charges are going to be repelled. So we'll see this net separation of charges. The right side is going to be more negative, and the left side is going to be more positive. Then if we bring in a uh, contact to um, you know, some more space where these extra charges on the left side, those extra positive charges can occupy, we'll find that those positive charges will actually flow out. Or more accurately, it's electrons flowing in on the left side there. Um, but the, the net effect is the same here. The left side was positively charged. It's going to become neutrally charged. So we get a balance of charges, and then we remove that extra contact, and we see that we have more negative charges or fewer positive charges in the, the animation, but it would be more negatives. Turns out the positives, the protons, don't move around too much, but the electrons are free to move around quite a bit. Um, and then when we move the... Uh, the charged object out of the way, we still have this net negative charge on, uh, on our object, and that's called charging by induction. Now this one only works for conductors, because we have to have those charges being able to, to move from place to place. And actually that's, that's somewhat true with uh, charging by, um, uh, by contact as well. Um, you can have some transfer of charge, but it works better, certainly, if charges from all over the object can transfer from one place to another. Now, other methods of charging, we've got um, the, the big one that, uh, that will be important for us is through chemical reactions. Certain chemical reactions generate positively charged or negatively charged ions. And that's going to be important when we talk about batteries. That's all a battery does, is it conducts this chemical reaction again and again and again. On one side of the battery, it generates positively charged ions, and on the other side, it generates negatively charged ions. Uh, so we'll look at that more as we get into our circuits study.